Hi, my name is Bjorn and this is a quick video where I'm going to explain the basics of matrix math and matrices in Maya. There's also going to be a few practical examples. Now, as you can see, I have a Maya scene here with a parent and a child. So the child is parented under the parent and it has translation values of its own within the parent space. As well, the parent has its own translation values in the world space. So Maya already provides the local and world matrices, but you can calculate it yourself and you might want to do so. If you'd like to find the world matrix of the child, you need to multiply the local matrix of the child with the parent's world matrix. Similarly, if you know the world matrix of the child and want to find the local matrix, you need to multiply the world matrix of the child with the inverse parent matrix. Now I'll get back to this in a minute. First, let's go and do a practical example. For us to manually deal with matrices in Maya, we need to make sure that Maya matrix nodes are loaded in your plugin manager. Now we can use a decompose matrix node to take apart the output of any matrix we put into it. So let's go ahead and connect the local matrix of the child geometry to the decompose matrix node. I'm going to use a multiply divide node just to see what outputs we get. I think it's a good node for this demonstration, but we don't need to multiply anything. We'll use a separate node for this. But let's go ahead and connect our decompose matrix node up to the multiply divide node. We'll see that there are different outputs because the matrix has been decomposed. So let's connect the translation values to input one of the multiply divide node. Again, this is just to see the results of our calculations. Now, if we look at the input, we'll see that the numbers match up with the translation values of our child geometry that we're decomposing the matrix of. If I go ahead and connect the world matrix of the child geometry up to the decompose matrix node, we'll see that the values change to something else. That's because we're getting the world matrix of the object. So that's the translation values if the object was not parented under a parent. If I duplicate the object and parent it to world, we'll see that the values match up with the calculation we have from Maya. So the output world matrix is the same as if the object was parented in world space. Now let's get rid of it again and focus on the parent and the child. So Maya already gives you both the local matrix and the world matrix of each object in the scene. But in some cases, you might want to calculate this if you're writing deformers, for instance. So here are two ways to calculate both the world matrix and the local matrix based on existing values. Now, stay with me. <laughs> we're going to move the decompose matrix node to the right so we have a bit of space. Now we're going to need a multiply matrix node, mold matrix. Now to find the child's world matrix, we want to multiply the local matrix of the child with the parent's world matrix. So go ahead and connect the local matrix of the child geometry up to the mold matrix nodes input zero and connect the world matrix of the parent geometry up to the mold matrix nodes input one. Now let's get rid of our decompose matrix node and Rename the mult matrix node to something we know what is. This is the node we use to multiply matrices together to find the world matrix of the child geometry. Now that we have the child geometry's world matrix, we can calculate the local matrix of the child. So let's go ahead and create an inverse matrix node. Now we'll go ahead and connect the matrix output of the parent geometry, either local or world matrix. In this case, it doesn't matter because there's no parent of the parent. It's in world space. Once connected with the inverse matrix node, if you go to the attribute editor, you can actually see the matrix visualized. So in the top we have input properties, and that is the matrix input. What this node does is inverse the input of the matrix to get the inverse matrix. You can see here at the bottom row, we have our translation values. So this is what a matrix looks like for an object in Maya. It consists of four columns and four rows. 
In linear algebra, this is known as the identity matrix, the neutral position for the object. Autodesk Maya handles rotation and scale values in the first 3x3 three three part of the matrix. X is represented by the first row, Y is represented by the second row, and Z is represented by the third row. Translations are handled by the fourth row. Now back to our calculation. We're trying to find the local matrix based on knowing the child's world matrix and the parent's inverse matrix. So now that we have the inverse matrix of the parent geometry's world matrix, we need to multiply this with the world matrix of the child geometry. We'll use another mult matrix node to multiply our two calculations together to find the local matrix again. Now we can hook it up, or actually we cannot. We need to decompose the matrix. Right, so this is important. The matrix output is the value I showed you before. It's both rotation, translation, and scale values in one. So we need to pull it apart to pick out the values we want. For that, we'll use the decompose matrix node. With that, we can take, for instance, the translation value and pipe it into a three-dimensional container. In this case, I'm just using the multiply divide node. What we see now is the local matrix of the child geometry. So we calculated first to the world matrix and then we calculated back to the local matrix and this is the result. So right now we're seeing the local transform values, but if I connect the world matrix calculation up to our decomposed matrix node, we'll see the world space transforms. So if we go back to the inverse matrix node, just to see the input matrix of the parent geometry, we'll see 1, 1, and 1. Now these values represent the scale of the object. Now this is where it gets a bit confusing. If we rotate the parent geometry and go back and check the matrix, we'll see that these numbers have changed even though we haven't scaled the object. You can also see one of the rows has no changed values. That's the Y row. So here's another example. If we rotate an object in the Z axis by 30 degrees, we're going to be changing the Y and X vector of the matrix, not the Z one. That's because we're rotating the object in the set axis. Now to change rotations through matrices in Maya is not as easy as just typing in 30 in either of the slots. Since we rotated our object in the set axis, we need to find the new x and y vector. To do that in our example, we need to take our 30 degrees and divide it by 180. Then we'll multiply that with pi. This gives us the radian of 30 degrees, which we'll then use to calculate our x and y vectors using cosinus and sinus. If we do that, these are the values we'd see in our matrix, after rotating the object 30 degrees. Notice that the set axis remains the same, as this is the one we rotated from. Now, let's set our parent geometry back to zero rotations and let's try and scale it up instead and see what the matrix looks like. Now I scaled the parent geometry to 5, and notice in the matrix how each axis has a value of 5. That's because the object has been scaled 5 in each axis. Now if I rotate the object, we'll see that in the matrix we get different values. These are the same ratio as before though, as the same calculation is applied. It's just a different number, a higher number, since we scaled the object to a larger size. Now that's about all I wanted to say about matrix math in Maya. If you want to download the file that I worked with in this example, feel free to go on to bloviab.com to download it. There you can also find tutorials about rigging, Python scripting, and 
cheat codes for life in general. So, see you there.